I've been seeing a lot of discussions lately about brakes, you know, performance versus blast, uh, which is great. Uh, but a lot of it has revolved around marketing, uh, which isn't necessarily correct. Um, so I just wanted to uh, put some of you guys on the right track uh, by going over the basics of you know, how all of this actually works. Important factors that affect how a muzzle brake works. So how much gas is probably the biggest uh, factor which affects how a muzzle brake performs. So it's heavily dictated by the cartridge and the biggest and easiest example is the grains of powder equals the volume of gas. So a six dasher uses less power, powder, uh, a six Creedmoor uses more powder. So the volume of gas is going to be larger. So the, the volume of gas that is going to power and fuel the muzzle brake, the, mu the muzzle brake is gonna work a lot harder and it's gonna work better with the larger volume of gas. So it's gonna perform significantly better on a six Creedmoor than it will a six Dasher, even if they're shooting the same bullet. And this goes for the same if we're shooting a six Dasher and we're using a mild load in a six Dasher or a, uh, a hot load in a six Dasher, just with more or less powder, the hotter load in the Dasher is going to work better and have less recoil because the volume of gas that is powering the muzzle brake is larger. The volume of gas is the biggest and most important factor, but the speed and the pressure of the gas is also an important factor, but just a little bit less. So uh, like we said, a mild load versus a hot load, the hot load is gonna work better uh, with the muzzle brake on it because there's more uh, volume of gas which is powering it and the speed and the pressure of the gas will also be higher. Um, now if you take the muzzle brake off, interesting thing, the mild load will have less recoil, uh, the hot load will have more recoil, but then if you put the muzzle brake on, the hot load will then have less recoil uh, than the mild load because the speed and the pressure is higher and the volume of gas that is powering the brake is higher. So, uh, other things that can affect the speed and the pressure of the gas, uh, different powder for the same bullet weight, um, the burn rate will be different, you might use less or more powder for example, uh, you can use less or more powder for the same powder uh, with the same bullet weight, um, or you can jam the bullet into the lands with the same charge weight and that will increase the pressure and the speed of the gas as well, so that's something to consider. So onto the muzzle brake itself, uh, gas deflection is one of the major um, aspects that contributes to performance. And gas deflection is how much gas the brake, the brake redirects. So if you only have this much gas and only half of the gas is being redirected out the sides and the other half is escaping through the muzzle brake, then you'll have less performance than if you deflect and redirect two thirds of the gas and two thirds comes out the sides and only one third escapes out the end of the brake. The other major factor with the muzzle brake itself, uh, which affects performance is the efficiency. So we've redirected the gas and then how efficient the muzzle brake is at converting that redirected gas into performance. Now the two main things that affect that is the push, the gas pushing onto the muzzle brake, which will counter the effects of recoil, and then the jet effect of the gas shooting out of the muzzle brake, uh, whether it be sideways or rearwards, uh, which is far more efficient and equals far more performance. Um, also the interior design is how it is shaped, how the gas will push onto a surface uh, before it comes out the side, um, therefore giving you push. So more gas deflection as we went over it equals more performance. So some gas deflection, let's say that's half 
of the gas that we have is coming out the sides, or if we redirect 90%, that'll equal more performance. Same goes with the efficiency. The higher the efficiency, so compared to shooting the gas out sideways, that's less efficient as opposed to shooting the gas out rearwards, the higher the efficiency equals more performance. So more performance equals more blast. So if we're redirecting more gas, the blast is going to be greater. The blast is going to be intense. There's going to be more, there's going to be more of it. That is going to affect the shooter more. If the efficiency is higher, instead of we're shooting it out the side, we're shooting it backwards at an angle, the blast is going to be increased to the shooter. You can't get around this. This is physics. More performance equals more blast and vice versa. Muzzle rise reduction. So the muzzle rise reduction is the muzzle brake, instead of shooting the gas rearward, some of the gas is taken away and it is redirected upwards. Taking gas away from fighting recoil reduces performance. It does, however, improve muzzle rise and make the reticle easier to control. But in doing that, you're taking gas away from fighting recoil and it actually does reduce recoil performance. So can we reduce blast to the shooter? Yes, yes we can. Uh, there's a few ways we can do it. So uh, you can lower the velocity and the pressure of the gas, uh, usually with a silencer. So the gas coming out of the muzzle uh, on a 308 base case uh, with a 24 to 26 inch uh, barrel is normally around 9,000 PSI. Um, what a silencer will do, it will lower the pressure and the velocity of the gas by about half or less. Uh, so, so meaning if you got 9,000 PSI, uh, the PSI inside the silencer will either be 4,500 PSI or less. Uh, which is great. So then the gas coming out of the end of the silencer and then powering the muzzle brake, uh, the velocity and the pressure will be significantly less. Uh, so the effects of that on the shooter will then also be significantly less. So another way that we can uh, create less blast to the shooter is distance. So if the blast is further away from the shooter and the distance is larger, the effects of the blast will feel much softer to the shooter and it will be a lot nicer uh, to shoot. Uh, now, the other way, which is how most people nowadays with a muzzle brake, if you reduce the performance, so if you redirect less gas, um, then yes, uh, the performance will be less, but the blast, because there's less of it, uh, the effects of the blast will then be less to the shooter because there's less of it. Uh, you won't feel it as much because you know more gas will be coming out of the end of the brake uh, as opposed to uh, coming out the sides of the brake, which the shooter will feel. So how do we reduce blast on our muzzle brakes? So we use our redirected blast technology, uh, which is patent pending because we know that if we create more distance between the shooter and the blast, uh, the effects are felt far less um, and it's a better experience. So what we do is we redirect the blast rearward because that equals more performance um, and we don't want to give up performance. So then what we do is we redirect the blast upwards at an angle over the shooter's head instead of back at the shooter. So what that does is it creates distance because that's what we're going for between the shooter and the blast itself, which is then lowering the effects of the blast to the shooter 
and almost tricking and beating the system into you thinking that you're shooting a low blast, low performing break uh, because the blast is less intense, but you're just feeling the less intense blast because the blast is further away from you. So, less blast equals less performance and more blast equals more performance. Except when it comes to our redirected blast technology, which is an exception. So, a high performing break will have the most amount of blast and the most amount of performance. And a low blast break will have less blast and less performance. Now, when it comes to a Chad, a Chad will give you the illusion of a low blast break. Uh, it won't quite be the same, uh, but it will have the performance of a high performance break because you're not making compromises. Now, when it comes to a silencer plus a break, it will have significantly less blast because we're lowering the pressure and we're lowering the velocity significantly. However, because we're lowering the velocity and we're lowering the pressure significantly, the gas volume that the brake is using uh, will not be as effective because the gas that's powering it isn't as powerful, if you get what I mean. So it's at a significant handicap, the brake with the silencer, uh, and it just can't work as well. But it will give you that awesome blast-free, low blast experience that only a silencer can give you. So where does muzzle rise come into all of this? Well, uh, muzzle rise is not independent of recoil because the amount of recoil you have uh, dictates the amount of muzzle rise that you will have. But you can address muzzle rise by itself without addressing recoil at all and give the illusion of less recoil when really all you're doing is addressing how easy it is to control the reticle um, and how much reticle movement you have. Um, the biggest and easiest giveaway of this is how long the recoil impulse is and how long the reticle moves for uh, because the reticle can still be easy to control even though the reticle is moving for a longer period of time um, than it being more difficult to control, but it moving for a shorter amount of time. However, this is a very complex issue and we will discuss and talk about muzzle rise tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, today we were just talking about recoil itself. So that's pretty much it. More performance equals more blast. So unless you've um, got a product that uses our patent pending redirecting blast technology, uh, which creates distance between you and the blast, you know, softening the effects of the blast. If a product has less blast than another product, it simply has less performance. Um, and yeah, it's that simple.